I'll call the City of Milton Common Council meeting Tuesday, November 14th, 2017 to order at 6 o'clock p.m. And can I get confirmation of the appropriate meeting notice? The agenda was posted at Dave's Ace Hardware, Piggly Wiggly, and Milton City Hall. Thank you. And you have an agenda in front of you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries and we have an agenda. Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Ryan's, Ryan's next. Ryan Reed on the 28th. <laughs> oh, great. That's perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> we'll, we'll just have an agenda. agenda item. All those in favor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, Mark's not here. It's a wild west all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Item number four, approval of the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve consent agenda. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. All right. What we've all been waiting for for months. For months. <laughs> okay. So, so, item number five. So what I will do uh, is I'm going to give uh, just a... a quick, I'll say quick, uh, presentation regarding the budget. And if, if folks recall, back on October 17th of this year, we provided a, a, a similar presentation that showed the preliminary budget at that time, uh, and that, that had a handful of assumptions in it based on information that we had not received from the state yet. The good news is, is that we have all of that information now today, and that's included in this presentation and was included in your packets that were uh, mailed out on Friday of last week. So this is an updated version of the budget. In addition to uh, updating that budget that was pre presented on the 17th, we also discussed at our meeting last week uh, the possibility of looking at, at options, uh, two, really two different budgets. There's the budget that was basically the budget that was presented on October 17th, and then there is uh, an alternative budget, which we're calling Budget B, as opposed to Budget A, uh, that shows uh, what would happen or what the budget would look like if we were to levy uh, to the, the cap that's allowed by the state. And that, that piece has changed. If you remember from the meeting last week, we, the budget that we prepared on October 17th estimated expenditure restraint to be at 1.9%. <clears throat> but uh, we found out shortly... Uh, probably about two weeks after that, or maybe three weeks after that, that that number is actually at 3%. Uh, so that's good news in terms of the budget. Uh, that, that means that uh, uh, we had tremendous growth in the community and that our expenditure restraint number uh, mirrored that growth. Uh, so we're able to, uh, uh, the expenditure restraint cap went up, which means we're able to levy more dollars if the council so chooses. So, so we'll go through a couple of slides here. Um, and some of these may look familiar, uh, and I'll point out the areas where it has been updated since the 17th, just so everybody kind of understands. But as always, we start with, th these are the five goals that, that uh, we as staff kind of used in order to, to start with that base budget. We want a balanced budget, one that stays within levy limits. We want to qualify for expenditure restraint. We want no reductions in service, and we want no new borrowing. And those, at times, are very lofty goals. Uh, this year, however, um, we were able to, to do so uh, because of the growth that we had, it made it, made it easier to kind of meet some of those, uh, check some of those boxes. <clears throat> Taking just a quick look back, in 2016, the adopted bud budget had uh, general fund expenditures of 2.6 million. In 2017, so the budget that we're currently operating in, had uh, uh, general fund expenditures of 4.7 million, which was an increase of about 1.3%. So general fund expenditures increased 1.3% uh, in the budget that we're in, which is a very small number. 
And then at the bottom, it shows the tax rate uh, from, from 2016 to 2017. Now, to compare it to what, we presented, what, what we're presenting this evening, uh, 2018 preliminary A, which is the budget that you saw on October 17th, uh, shows an increase in general fund expenditures of about 1.22%. So even less than what we increased last year. So again, that is a, a rather small number uh, considering uh, the, the size of the budget and what we're able to accomplish with that. But again, that's preliminary budget A. <clears throat> so that's what we saw on the 17th of October. Contribu contributing factors to the 2018 budget construction, city's growth. Uh, the city saw substantial growth in, in uh, 2016, 2017, uh, with a net new construction increase of 1.43%. Uh, that actually constituted the second highest uh, in Rock County. Uh, that overall, how that, how that helps us is it positively impacts the tax rate. Uh, expenditure restraint in order to qualify for the estimated $122,000 in state aid in 2019, uh, the budget cannot increase expenditures by more than $115,000. If you may remember back on the 17th, again, we estimated that number to be, we exp estimated the expenditure restraint number to be 1.9, so that number was actually more like 73,000, and now it's 115. And of course, there's the affordability, which is the subjective piece of the budget, but it is one that is nevertheless, uh, it's, it's equally as important, in my opinion, as those other two, developing a budget that maintains services at an affordable, as affordable as possible, and that's that can versus should question. Can we do something? Yes, but should we do it? That's a different question, and, then, and that's, that's kind of where the tough decisions are made. As I talked about before, the city realized an overall increase in $27 million in equalized value last year. That is a very, very, very large number, one of the largest numbers we've seen in, in, in at least a decade. Levy limits are based on that number, are based on net new construction, and that number is a direct result uh, of that. Net new construction is, is new value that was created in the community. Um, so the 27 million wasn't all new value; that's increased value. But net new, the net new construction number, Dan, was was what was it? Five million, six million? It's known as 1.43 percent. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. the number. <laughs> but it was between five and six. I, I think it was not below there. five. Yeah. I'll look it up. All right. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Levy limits provide a cap in the amount that a town, village, or city or, and, and county uh, may implement a property tax levy on parcels within their boundaries. And again, remember, levy is how much tax dollars are collected by the city. And for all intents and purposes, that's actually the only thing that the council and the city can affect is the levy. Tax rate is somewhat out of our control because it's, it's a product of a number uh, of different variables. In, this, uh, in this, these, these two budgets that we'll present, budget A uh, is, is about $30,000 below that levy limit. Budget B is levied at the limit of 3.236353. Uh, so budget B would levy to the cap that is allowed by the state. Budget A would be about $30,000 less. And, and again, budget A is what we saw on October 17th, basically. <clears throat> The other piece of the equation, expenditure restraint. Expenditure restraint is, is a different cap imposed by the state. Levy limits are a cap imposed on how much tax dollars you can collect. Expenditure restraint is a, a cap set by the state on how much money you can spend. Uh, a lot of times, more often than not, those two numbers are at different levels. One's above the other one or below the other one. What we have seen in the city of Milton is the last, in the last two years is that the expenditure restraint cap has actually been lower than the levy limit cap. So last year, we didn't levy to the, to the cap. We left about $70,000 on the table. The year before that, we did not levy to the cap. We left about $16,000 on the table. If we are to adopt budget A, we'd leave about $30,000 on the table. So I'm trying to just put that in context. The reason expenditure restraint is important is the state incentivizes you to stay below that cap. And they incentivize you through a state aid bonus. This year's bonus was about $115,000, and we're estimating next year's bonus to be about $122,000. So if we were to violate expenditure restraint in the 2018 budget, we would not qualify for that state aid bonus in 2019. So we would start right out of the gates in two, in the, on the 2019 budget construct, about $122,000 in the hole. And 
what determines the expenditure restraint? The state. So not how much we levy and how, not how much we spend the year before. There is a quote that, that's a factor of the expenditure restraint. Um, how much you levy is, 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 a port, is a variable within the construction of the expenditure restraint. But it is not the only piece. What causes that expenditure restraint to go up is net new construction, similar to levy limits or increased value. And inflation. And inflation. Inflation was significantly higher this year. Correct. There's no penalty for violating, and, I, and that, that's a very, it's, it, you know, it's probably an overly dramatic word, but to exceed, we'll say exceed the expenditure restraint cap, there's no penalty to do so. If you exceed levy limits, there's a penalty. And You're I in trouble. Communities go over. Expenditure restraint? Yes. Every year, less and less communities qualify for expenditure restraint. That's why that bonus continues to increase on a year-to-year -year basis. It is. For every community that continues to qualify for it, every time somebody drops off, it just means that their bonus grows up on a prorated basis. Okay. Yeah. So the state makes available a pool of funds, and every year that pool of funds is divided by a number or a denominator that continues to shrink, at least for now. Yeah. Maybe someday that number will go back up. You know? But the trend has been that that number continues to decrease because less and less communities are able to meet that expenditure restraint and still function. Meaning they Right. Right. Versus making tough choices. Perhaps. That might be one reason, yeah. I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth. <laughs> I would say that every municipality is making tough choices, and sometimes they just don't want to maybe cut their safety services and they'll go over well, the expenditure here's, here's the, like that. Remember, uh, remember what I said is those, those two numbers are often on different levels. And, and let's say, let's say uh, so, so last year we did not levy to the cap because the expenditure restraint prevented us from doing so. So we left $70,000 on the table in order to get a $115,000 bonus. At some point, if that trend were continue, to continue, at some point, the amount we would leave on the table would be much greater than the amount we would receive in bonus. So it would be, so at that point the community say, hey, it's not worth it to get this yeah, bonus anymore if I'm gonna leave, yeah. you know, let's, let's say our bonus is 115, but we're leaving $200,000 on the table. At some point, many communities are forced in that, in that position and they say, well, yeah, I really want that state aid bonus, but I can, more, I can get more than that if I just levy for it. So, so that too is a tough choice that communities have to make. And in the event, and I don't want to go too far out into the uh, into left field here, but in the event that a community goes for an operational referendum, they automatically violate Expenditure restraints, just right out of the gates. Just by doing it. So, so because at that point they're saying, "Hey, we want more than our levy limit." So they violated the expenditure restraint, or they they've exceeded the expenditure restraint, and they've they've asked the the taxpayers, "Can we exceed our levy limit as well?" So at that point, then those communities again are not eligible for expenditure restraint. They they have they they, they exceed their levy by permission of the taxpayers. And then what happens is the next year, whatever their new levy is, that becomes their new base. And they may qualify again at that point. So, so it's looked at on an annual basis. Uh, <clears throat> I probably t said a lot of this stuff already, but uh, to qualify for our 2019 expenditure restraint uh, payment, both must apply. The city must not exceed its expenditure restraint, and we must have a mill rate over five, uh, which, we, which we do. Um, Again, uh, all uh, all 2008 budget, all 2018 budgeted expenditures except debt service can only can increase by no more than three percent. So back on October 17th, we estimated that number to be 1.9 percent. So we estimated that we could not ex we could not increase our expenses less debt service by 73,000. We now know for certain that that number is three percent, which equals approximately 115,000. So with that being said, now budget A that we saw on October 17th qualifies for expenditure restraint. You might recall before on October 17th, we, we were looking at about a $9,000 cut. That's no longer necessary if the council so chooses to, to fully fund the nonprofits and, and, and look at that budget as we saw on the 17th. Budget B, which is, is the budget that we constructed uh, that does levy to the to the state imposed cap also qualifies for expenditure restraints so e either one we're good with expenditure restraint 
Uh, so this is the 2018 budget A construction. This is roughly what the team saw on October 17th. There's been some minor changes based on health insurance participation, uh, but other than that, this is roughly the same. Non-property tax revenue increase, uh, which is actually a decrease. Uh, employee relations went up 67,000. Operational changes went up 12,000, and nonprofit requests went up 5,400. That shows a preliminary 2018 tax levy of 3.2 million dollars. And then we're going to break each one of those down. What's the first item again? Non-property tax revenue increase. So that is expenditure restraint aid, interest earnings, payment in lieu of taxes, licensing and permits, shared revenue, and estimated highway aid. That's what makes up that number. So we saw an increase in our expenditure restraint aid payment, which we talked about a couple slides ago. We saw an increase uh, or in, in our interest earnings. We saw an increase in our payment in lieu of taxes. And then we have a, just a, a, a minor increase in some other areas that equal about $1,100. We're estimating licensing and permits are going to go up about $200. Shared revenue went down. State highway aid went down. So despite the fact that the governor passed a budget with a 15% increase in transportation aids, we still saw a decrease in Milton. So what that means is, had he not passed the budget with a 15% increase, we would have seen a greater decrease. <laughs> so we appreciate that. Thank you for not having us lose you know, $50,000, uh, but we still lost $4,000 in, in state aid, aid in terms of transportation aid. Do you know, Dan? <laughs> the net new construction was 5.1 million. There you go, 5.1 Twenty-five thousand. So that three hundred twenty-five thousand is four thousand dollars less than it was last year. Employee relations. Basically, none of the numbers have changed on this since we saw it last time, other than a slight change in contingency. A three percent parcel wage increase. Uh, Eight percent increase in health insurance. That's the the city's contribution to health insurance. Health insurance costs went up eight percent. The city's portion of that is 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 fourteen thousand. The employees take on the other portion of that. We're increasing the buyout uh, from two hundred to three hundred dollars a month uh, in order to kind of meet that increasing cost of health insurance and continue to incentivize, frankly, people to uh, choose other health insurance. Is 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 you know as callous as that may sound, it's it's the way of the world right now. Uh, reallocation of DPW's time. We do this every year. We look back at about a three-year average of where our DPW workers are actually working, where are they actually spending their time. Uh, because remember, not so what we're looking at here is simply general fund. So every year we kind of do an evaluation of where folks spend their time, and what we've seen is that there's been an increased amount of activity in, in general fund activities as opposed to stormwater, water, and wastewater. So that's what that means. 1.5% uh, increase for police union contract, that's, uh, that's per their contract. Level funding police wages. We've had a lot of changes and undulations in, in the police department over the last uh, two years, really. And this level funds the police wages, so there's not big spikes uh, as, as folks move up through the, through the union ladder. And then our decrease in contingency of $35,000. And that was, that was simply to, again, to balance the budget. Operational changes. Uh, it's probably easier for you to look on your computer than try to read that up there, but I'm going to do my best. Fire department increased 18,000. That was the budget that was uh, approved by the fire commission. Law enforcement uh, equipment and, and operations, there new equipment being purchased, uh, uh, redoing the new, new pistols, uh, new radios. Uh, elections, we're going to have four elections in, hopefully only four, in, uh, well, I guess, I guess we can't have a special election in 2019 or 2018. Yeah. So four elections in 2018 as opposed to the, the one we had this year, or two that we had this year. 
our legal increase uh, based on the contract that we signed last year. Uh, capital expenditures uh, increased about $5,196. And again, these are increases over the 17 budget. Other miscellaneous uh, increases and decreases, that's where kind of everything else gets lumped in. You know, minor changes to supplies, minor changes here, $50 here, $100 there, equates to about $9,900. Uh, increased water rates for the splash park. Um, I know we talked about this on the 17th, so I apologize for repeating myself, but I think it's probably worth it. Um, you know, we had a rate increase in, in the city charges itself for the water that it uses. Uh, that's by law, we have to do that. Uh, increase in the mayor council training budget of $2,100, and that's just to match basically what the what the practice has been. Um, this year, I think the budget was uh, 2,400, and it was and, and it was far exceeded. So we wanted to kind of match that up with reality. Uh, city garage utilities and equipment maintenance decreased slightly. Uh, assessor's contract decreases uh, fairly substantially based on the contract that we signed with them. That tears down. And then retiree and OPEP funding decreased because we had somebody um, off of our finish up on there. Uh, right. They're, they they're no longer covered by us. <laughs> I'm normally a little bit more articulate than this. I guess. I don't know. Grant is sick, so I'll, I'll blame him. Nonprofit requests. Historical Society requested 10,000 last year, requested 10,000 again this year, uh, so that is not an increase. YMCA scholarships uh, requested uh, 2,000 last year, but were not funded. So their, their request of 1,200 this year constitutes a $1,200 increase. The gathering place requested 10,000 last year, uh, but received uh, 5,898 something or other. Uh, so, so they requested 10,000 again this year. So that's what constitutes the $4,202 increase. Capital requests. Uh, this hasn't changed since what we saw on the 17th. Um, purchase of a new squad car or one and a half squad cars. Uh, the tool cat, including trade-in, brush chipper, pavement roller, uh, tree replacement, water heater replacement at the DPW garage, uh, rolling stock savings, weapons replacement, and zero turn lawnmower. So this constitutes about a $4,000 increase over what was funded in capital last year. Go ahead. Yep. Is that the new building? Yes. We're already replacing the water heater in our new DPW? Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank you. Use hot water on. <laughs> <laughs> it's used for the, the car wash and all of the different areas. And we have to have tempered water for the eye wash, right. for the safety, and then the bathrooms. Yeah. But it was just a. Uh, the building was contracted out. It was just a bad piece of equipment. So the rest of everything else down there is not really anything you'd anticipate replacing for being new. Right. The water heater just it just was a bad a bad buy the by the contractor and it's out of warranty, so you're just stuck replacing so it. So it lasted uh, ten years? Okay. No, it's no, only, no, no, it's no, only no, about four years. Old. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. only about four years yeah. old. Yeah. It's just a piece of equipment that you just it's it's just what happened with the as part of the whole um, project yeah okay thank you so some uh, pending request in this we discussed this uh, you know a little bit last week uh, what are some outstanding capital items that we know we will eventually need sooner rather than later on some of these um, parks mower snow plow lease sidewalk repairs and installation library parking lot go ahead I, was just, I mean, it's not like we're not spending any money on sidewalks, right? Right. What we have, uh, what we have, is an assessment fund, and that that's how we that's how we uh, fund our sidewalk repairs and in like sidewalk gap installations. Eventually, that money will disappear, though. It's, it is not a recycled fund. It is there's a, there's a pot of money there, and it shrinks every year. So there's not a there's not a sustainable funding source for that. And we have lots of sidewalks that are in need of repair because if anybody wants to borrow my chair, go down somewhere. And these uh, yeah. we we fully fund the sidewalk repairs. We don't assess Correct. those to homeowners. For the most part. If if it's a new lot after 1996, then they pay for their own sidewalk. Okay. Or new, new installation. New installation. But not repairs. Replacement and repairs the city pays yeah. for. Yeah. Okay. The general fund does. Okay. Yeah. 
So in this budget, um, how much did we have dedicated for sidewalk repairs, Dan? We've historically just taken, we've budgeted 25000 um, whether we use it all because we break the city up in quadrants and, and replace what's necessary, but I think this past year we spent 12 or 13 so. So the library parking lot, and that's, that's the one behind the building. I want to make sure people understand that. If you've been back there, it's in rough shape. Uh, we need to repaint the splash pad, um, and that takes a very special type of paint when you consider how much water and traffic and making sure the little kids aren't slipping and stuff on it, that needs to be repainted uh, about every f three to five years, depending on usage and sunlight and things like that. So uh, the Highway 59 turn signals, it's been probably one of the most common requests, I, I can easily say that since I've been here is uh, can we please put a turn signal at the Highway 59 and Janesville Street intersection. So we've looked into it, and that's that's what the cost would be, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, flashing yellow turn signal. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Turn. yeah. 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 Uh, seal coat the cemetery in Cross Ridge Park, $7,000. The Liberty Park fence, if you've, if you've ever noticed, there's portions of that fence that are in pretty rough <laughs> shape. And then a commercial carpet cleaner for our buildings. Uh, here, library, uh, other places that are carpeted. So one thing that I will say about this list is, is this list is, is, it is not finite. And what I mean when I say that is we never know necessarily when a piece of equipment is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, break like a water heater, like a four-year-old water heater. So this, this list is, is, is a, basically a snapshot of what we know we need today. A month from now, this list may look slightly different, but we know that these we know that these items are not going to go away. It's likely going to be added to. But with that being said, there are items on this list that could be funded potentially in part or in total through alternative funding sources. Um, if we were to choose to fund the Highway 59 turn signal with TIF dollars, we could. If we were to um, fund the Liberty Park fencing with TIF dollars, we could. Uh, parks and Recreation, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but they could fund Liberty Park fencing. They could pay for a portion of the splash pad. So there, there, there are potential alternative funding sources for some of these items, but for other ones, there, there absolutely is not. It's, it's just general fund dollars. Parks mower, snow plow, um, you know, those things are, are what they are. So. so it could be donations. Some of those could be donated through nonprofits or whatever. Could. If, yeah, if somebody, yeah, yeah, like something like a, and, and something small like the commercial carpet cleaner, that likely could and will be purchased with, you know, if, the, if there ends up being a, uh, a, a small surplus at the end of the year, or if we sell another piece of equipment, similar to what we did with the, with the uh, barricade trailer this year. We were able to fund that through basically two alternate funding sources. We, we applied for a grant and we, we realized greater revenues from a sale of an existing piece of equipment and those two pieces together were able to fund that so we look at the, the this list is kind of always in the back of our mind sometimes it's in the front of our mind um, so we're always looking for ways to to take items off of this list to, per, to to satisfy items on this list but some of those larger scale things you know the snowplow lease thirty five thousand dollars that's just one that's one year's payment. That whole vehicle is probably closer to $160,000. So to find an alternative funding source for that is not easy. So that's something that we, we really do need to plan for. So with that all in mind, um, we, we go back and revisit our goals. The budget is balanced. It stays within levy limits. It does qualify for expenditure restraint now with the new ERP number. Uh, there are no reductions in service, and in this budget, there is no new borrowing. A few takeaways. This budget represents a continuation of services from previous years. There are no staff reductions or no service reductions. This budget can fully fund all nonprofit requests. This budget has no new borrowing component, but it's, as always, uh, we want to put that caveat on it. Currently, 26.7 cents of every dollar collected by the city goes to pay for debt service. What does this all mean? In the city's 2018 preliminary budget, budget A, 
which was the one similarly presented on October 17th, would not levy to the state allowed cap. Budget B would. The city can only increase expenditures by uh, $115,000 in order to qualify for ERP, and budget A and budget B both qualify for, for the ERP. What will the impact be in the city's 2018 preliminary budget? Budget A, which is again the one we saw on the, on the 17th, represents an approximate increase of about 1.73% in the tax rate. Budget B represents about a 2.64% increase in the tax rate. So we'll, we'll look at budget A and budget B and then, and then we can really break those down because I'm almost done with my presentation. Uh, budget A again is, low, is levies below the state allowed cap. It qualifies for expenditure restraint. It has a tax rate of $10.01. Uh, the unused levy capacity will be reduced in future legislative adjustments in order in, to create the levy uh, calculations. So in other terms, those dollars are use it or lose it. So that question has been asked of me uh, by a number of council members and folks in the public and even some folks on the MAC board. Well, what happens if you don't levy to the state imposed uh, levy cap? Uh, some of those dollars will go away. You're, you're, it's not, they, they don't carry over on an annual basis. You can't just build up a big, a big pile and then, and then one year say, all right, we're going to levy an additional million dollars. Yeah, like uh, last year, we, we, we left 70000 on the table, and we were, we were able to use 40 of that this year. Yeah. So I would imagine next year's calculation would be something similar. Right. But I don't know what that calculation is. And any unused ERP capacity will not carry over as well. So that, that, is, that is truly a use it or lose it, uh, whereas the levy limit is use it or risk losing a portion of it, really, is kind of, we ought to add more words to the slide. But if we have use for it, then it's not going to be wasted. Right, 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 right. right. yes. Yeah. The 70000 left on the table last year yep. would have still kept us under expenditure restraint? Nope. Okay, how, how much did we leave on the table that would have accommodated that? Seventy thousand so for expenditure we, restraint. We, we we levied up to the expenditure restraint. Right, but you're saying we left seventy thousand. We could have levied additionally. Yes, but not qualifying for expenditure. Correct. Restraint. We would have we would have exceeded the expenditure restraint cap. So we couldn't have levied a dollar more than what we did last year. Well, we could have. That's if that's we chose if asking. we chose not to qualify for expenditure restraint. Okay, so while qualifying, we did we leave any money on the table? See what I'm saying here, or no, Dan? We, we did not leave any money on the table in order to qualify for expenditure restraint. We levied up to the Expen maximum we could to qualify, to qualify for, for expenditure. Right. Yeah. So that seventy thousand was left on the table in terms of the levy limit, but not expenditure restraint. We met that right down to the last dollar. Yeah. I so left. I, I left nothing. So we, had we levied for the seventy thousand, we wouldn't have had the one fifteen to start. Correct. Yep, yep. So budget B uh, levies to the state allowed cap of $3.2 million, which is about $30,000 more than what budget A is. It does qualify for expenditure restraint. The tax rate goes from 1001 to 1010 and represents about a 2.64% increase over, the, over this year's tax rate. And future levies and ERP calculations will have the increased base to include it in their subsequent legislative adjustments. So what that means, it's a lot of words to basically say the state will recognize the fact that we levied to that amount and will not penalize us for doing so. And that, uh, uh, ten, that nine cent change yes. comes to on a $100,000 home? $9. So here is a piece of information that we just added today, and the reason we added it today is because we just got this information today. Um, and, and the piece that we just got today is the Rock County portion of this tax bill. So thank you for all your hard work. Thanks, too. <laughs> Supervisor yeah. Zajac. Um, so what, what this is showing, what the, with these next, basically what these next two slides will show, is um, this is what folks will see on their tax bill. If you live in the city of Milton and we were to adopt budget A, this is what, you're, what you will see. The only piece that's still unknown is the school credit at the bottom there. See, it says school credit estimated. 
but that is such a very small portion of the budget that even if it goes up or down, you know, $50,000, it really doesn't move the needle in any kind of substantive way. So, Rock County's uh, tax rate went up 5.59%. They're levy. Or levy, I'm sorry, levy. Rock County's levy went up 5.59%. Budget A for the for the council to, to consider on the 28th, um, and again, that's the one that we saw on, on October 17th, constitutes about 2.14% increase on the levy. The school district's levy went down uh, 14 one hundredths of a percent. Blackhawk Tech went up about 8%. Um, so what that, is, what that shows is an overall increase in, in, on the, the levy of 1.84%. So when you combine all of those together, the levy in the, for City of Milton taxpayers, if the council was to just, let's say we were going to adopt Budget A tonight, which we can't, um, would go up 1.84%. If we were to do budget B, so it, it probably doesn't, you probably can't see it up there, but I, I did, I clicked next. Uh, so the difference is uh, budget B, or budget A is a 2.14% increase in the levy. Budget B is a 3.12% increase in the levy. So less than a less than a percent increase in the levy from A to B. And that, that changes the overall levy to 2.23%. So what will folks, really be interested in when they get their tax bills on December 6th or shortly thereafter, it's the tax rate. So the county's tax rate increased 5.15%. Budget A for the city constitutes a 1.73% increase on the tax rate. The school district's tax rate decreased 6 tenths of a percent and Blackhawk Tech went up 7.74% on the tax rate. So again, if the city, let's just pretend hypothetically the city was to adopt budget A tonight, then we all went on our merry way, the residents of the city of Milton would see an increase of 1.4% on their tax bill. That's budget A. Oh, good timing. Budget B, budget, so budget A would be a 1.4% increase on their tax bill. Budget B would be a 1.75% increase on their tax bill. So if, if the let, again, hypothetical situation, if the council was to adopt budget B tonight, the tax bill for a city of Milton resident would increase by 1.75%. <laughs> Can I ask a hypothetical question? You may not know the answer. <laughs> but how, and you've got quite a few projects pending construction projects, uh, under development, mm -hmm. new businesses talking to us. Mm -hmm. Do we have a sense of, and we may not, but do we have a sense of what that might look like next year come budget time? It's very hard to, so I think there's, I think there's two questions that you're asking there. Um, you know what is uh, what? What does the horizon look like for but for projects that are currently, let's say, pending? Yeah. And and I would say, you know, some of them look very good. Some of them look, you know, may, maybe pipe dreams. Um, but but we, you know, projects like Diamond Assets, for example, we know it, it, they're building it right now, right. and the tax rate that or the, the assessed value of that project on one one eighteen. Is going to be considerably lower than the tax rate than the, than the assessed value of that property on 1119 because it'll be under partial construction on 1118. So just that project alone will constitute, you know, a, 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 a substantial increase. And that's not in a TIF. It is in a TIF. It is yeah. in a TIF. So there's a thing. Um, but other, but there's, you know, Nate Rogers' project, um, you know, the, 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 the value of Charter NEX on 1117 is going to be considerably less than its value on 1118 because they they completed a large project. Handy Art com it completed a large project this year. Um, Michael Lucas's project is underway. Red Hawk Farms will hopefully start this year. And then there are other projects that that haven't kind of come to the finish line yet. But I think I think it's safe to say that we'll have additional projects in 2018. So that's the first question. What does that mean to the tax rate? That's 
every time the value increases, it generally has a positive impact on the tax rate. But it's not the only variable that affects tax rate. And, and I can use this as an example. So last year, this, so the budget that we're currently operating we collected less tax dollars in 2017 than we did in 2016. So the city actually took in less money and the tax rate went up 3.14%. This year, we're looking at increasing the amount of tax dollars. And yet our tax rate's only going, going to go up 1.74%. So, so that's, that's why it's really hard to answer the second, that second question with any great degree of certainty because it depends on net new construction, it depends on the assessment ratio, and it depends on their overall equalized value, TID in versus TID out. Did, um, did we experience that assessing error in last year's budget though? In our valuation, yes. Did that have an impact on the tax rate? I remember it was kind of like a double something. Yeah. Because they, well they, they, so there was a, there was a, over taxation two years ago so then in order to correct it the state adjusted. adjusted it which means that they they doubled down on that on that correction in what in order to make up for it so we're through that now yeah this but this for calculating tax rate we we do not include the TID districts when right. we come up with the tax rate um, the TID out number, which I think it's on a future slide. Um, no, because oh. it's the last slide. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <clears throat> the TID out number did not change by a significant amount because Blackhawk Tax Campus right. was a rented property last year, and so that came off the rolls, and that was like seven million. But then the correction happened, so it was a, basically a net impact of zero or plus or minus a, a very small number. And the other thing we'll have next year is the revaluation. So that no matter what happens with the tax rate, what a person sees could be completely different if, if their assessment changed by any kind of significant amount, plus or minus. So. Well, I have a couple things. Sure. So if you could just give me a minute, because I've tried to <laughs> organize this. Um, but <clears throat> we're about to presentation. <laughs> yes, I you, you should have sent us the slides ahead. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't put it in a PowerPoint. Power, PowerPoint. But uh, something to bring up first before I get to the, um, the point that I want to make. But back to, <clears throat> first of all, um, Having to do, <clears throat> having to do with the nonprofit requests because they do impact uh, the choice that I would make, uh, and the concerns that Dave had brought up before. You know, I do feel that we are not philanthropists, and uh, our role is not to make decisions uh, in terms of uh, making our taxpayers donors. Uh, and how to represent them. But I also feel that um, there's concerns by taxpayers and members of the community that there are certain um, things that they need that can be represented by capital expenses, um, like the Milton House, and perhaps the uh, gathering place, because those are things that we have used as a community long term. And while much of what they do is, in terms of their operating expenses, are uh, dealt with on fundraising uh, projects and other ways of gaining their money, that some of their needs, like keeping their property and their buildings in use for us as a community, become a little bit our responsibility. And when I looked around at area communities 
they too budgeted a certain amount within their city budgets to also take a partnership with those buildings. And, and I don't mean a lot of, of their money, but the, as they worked along with them, they, and I don't know what the funds would be, they were different than what we called them in the school district. There was a community fund where they could uh, place the money to keep year after year after year and keep adding money to that fund so that you were working toward a, a project. If you were, you know, if you had a living document and you were working toward um, a project of the, redoing a part of the Milton House and you added a certain amount that was budgeted uh, for the Milton House each year and you would keep that in a, a fund, certain fund over time. So you're so, saying like if, if there was like some project that required like $30,000 and the council said we're going to allocate five, ten, whatever that number is, once that number's hit, then you would release those funds for that project. Correct. And even if you don't know what the end project is, you would do it annually and over time they would be fundraising for something and you would get to it. But we would not release that money for operating expenses. In the same way with Gathering Place. You know, they have certain projects that they are looking forward to down the line, but we would be putting money into the into a capital budget or a fund, and over time then they would come to present something to us and want to gain money from that account. That's just a suggestion because I, I do agree that uh, you know that we are not there just to have people apply for grants. Um, I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna let you finish, but then after you get done, I'm gonna open the public hearing, and then everybody oh. else will have to wait till the public hearing. So okay, okay. is this okay? Um, I, I just have one more. Thing to say. Yeah, just just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't I can't not have the public hearing. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even know that was done. That's okay. <laughs> See, I didn't read the agenda. Okay. All right. No, Mark's not here. <laughs> and this is why we're going to increase our budget for Mark. <laughs> no, no, it's it's completely fine. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure that we actually open the public hearing. No, I didn't. It's okay. Here. Sorry. You're fine. So... The public hearing is now open for anyone that would like to comment on the budget. We should take call-ins. Like our, next year we'll do call-ins on the five, public you're hearing. On the year. Yeah. <laughs> Last stand up broadcast. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Let put that on the next agenda item how to continue. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, anybody want to speak? I the public hearing is open. Well, I, I'm more keen in case any questions came up. I know that's okay. happened a lot. Okay. Mike Pierce said he wanted to say something. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there a Mike Pierce in the house? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna close. Um, <laughs> oh, you make me shut up. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> That concludes the legal Any portion other of this. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> the public hearing. Okay, um, I'm going to close the public hearing now, and I want to thank the audience for their participation, <laughs> especially the the sign language was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now um, we're going to get back to uh, the city council's discussion, direction, and possible action comments, and we will uh, turn it over to Teresa. Okay, the last part of what I was saying. The, as part of what I was saying that they could contribute over time uh, brings me back to the last point in that over time is significant not only for community projects, I do think that they're significant for the city projects. When I look at your lists of uh, current capital expenditures as well as pending, uh, 
I do think that we need to, as a council, look at them and see those lists much like we see, okay, what did you purchase in 2016? What did you purchase or have you so far purchased in 2017? And what do you already have on the budget for 2018? And what's hanging out there that you want? So that we can see over time and start placing it in when that money appears. And I mean, I need to see it so that you, rather than just coming into a meeting, you say, okay, we found $25,000, we can get this, but somehow see it visually and so that we can be at a meeting and say, you know, maybe we could do this instead of that. Or, I mean, not that we're making decisions for you, I don't mean that, but we would like to creatively find the money as well. So I... I'm gonna, um, so does anybody else have uh, comments just to keep this going so we can follow it easier on the capital request part of the budget? I do. Okay. I do too. Go ahead, Dave. I'll, 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 go, I'll pass to you. Okay. Um, I guess to start with, uh, I know we're not making a decision right now. Budget B appeals to me because of the, um, Increased levy provides an increased base for legislative adjustments later on. Now that said, we're talking about um, the uh, nonprofit. Actually, Dave, I just wanted to focus right now our talk on capital requests. Well, I'm getting to that. Okay, all right. We, I'm, I'm looking at that based on or er, against the list of un. Unfunded capital requests. Uh, this this process has got to start looking at harder. Like, like uh, Bruce was saying, we got to start looking at this list harder. It's got to be prioritized. What do we absolutely need right now? What do we need after the first of the year? What do we need by July first? Whatever, and. That's got those decisions based on uh, need have to be made without any regard to nonprofit funding or anything else. Now, this profit B or budget B gives us thirty thousand more dollars, and that could be put towards some of those projects. You got twenty one thousand dollars sitting there in the nonprofit funding that could be put towards some of those projects. And to me, to proceed with any budget that does not even look at these funding projects and yet holds $21,000 in, in a pocket out here somewhere for the nonprofit is irresponsible because these needs whether it's next year or the year after, going to come back and bite this city and bite it hard. We've got to start looking at it. We've got to start addressing them. So, Dave, are you saying that we haven't been addressing our capital projects in the past few budgets, the past few years, or you think that we're just not addressing, putting enough money towards the capital projects each last, year? Last year we left, what, 130 some thousand dollars worth of projects on the table. There were a couple of small ones during the year with excess funds that we had. But we did that because we had to leave money on the table for the nonprofits. That should not, that decision for nonprofit funding should not even be discussed until we've taken care of as many projects as we can. It's like I've said before, our legitimate responsibility is to fund the government of the city. They are not part of the government of the city. We've got to realize that. So uh, one of the things that I just, I because I don't remember from last year um, off of our capital requests um, from 2017, uh, I was looking at the list of 2018 capital requests 
And so I was asking Al if he could comment on our 2018 capital request, what ones are from 2017 and what ones will always be on that? So I, I think the, the question is, is we had a similar list to, and what we're talking about is, is um, I need to get rid of all those animations. <laughs> it looks great when you're going forwards. but So what we're talking about is there's a 2018 capital request that's included in the budget. And I think the question is, what items on this 2018 capital request inclusions were items that were on the 2017 exclusions? Items that were not funded Correct. in the 2017 budget that are now being funded in the 2018 budget. And if my recollection, and Howie can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Toolcat, Brush Chipper, and uh, zero turn were items that were on last year's unfunded list that are now funded this year. The squad car, the one and a half squad cars will be on this list probably forever. Uh, they'll just be on it every year. Uh, but but to, to, to the mayor's point and, and I think to Dave's point is, yeah, there, there was, a, there was a, a lot of items that didn't make the cut last year and, and so now some of those items have been bumped up to this year. Um, because we're able to fund them. Some new items appeared because of necessity, like the water heater and the weapons replacement, uh, but, but a lot of these items were, were, came over from last year's list. Yeah. And, and so I guess part of my comment is uh, sometimes we don't fund something because something else had to be funded. Um, so it's not always because we didn't spend enough money on capital requests. And I'm not saying we should or we shouldn't, but I want to make sure that we're not um, leading people to believe that some items came off the list um, because there wasn't enough money. Some items came off the list because some other things had to be funded. And that's just kind of how it's always going to be. I mean, it's, it's always going to be... You know, we had to re re do something with the furnaces in this building, right? Mm -hmm. Last year, that was last year we did that, and that was, a, you know, so there has to be a level of flexibility, and if we can push stuff back because something else comes up, um, that's good to have that flexibility. But it also means that we're not reducing city services by not funding every capital request. I mean, we don't always get everything that we want the, so the, the only other thing I'll say to that is when we go to make this budget in 2019 this list this 2018 pending requests is where we will start the discussion for capital next year so this so I think to, to Teresa's point I think what you're asking for is can we show kind of you know what, what do we do the last three years and then what are we looking at for yeah. the next three years yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so and you're looking helpful. for like a capital improvement so one of the things that Rock County does, and I am sure all of our department heads would really be excited about this and enthused, is they actually fill out paperwork um, for all of their capital requests. And they talk about why, why this capital request is important, why it's a need, how does it fulfill the mission of their department, and it's, it's a one-page form. And it, it uh, gives more definition. I mean, Howie's like, oh, this is lovely. Howie already has that for so his department. Are, yeah. We've done that right. before. It would, yeah. I mean, it's, it's nothing out yeah. of ordinary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so Howie I mean, actually but, has that list. But that's something that really the, the council doesn't ha hasn't been looking at, and, I don't, and this, I'm not speaking for you saying that that's something you even want to look at. But if you want to have a bigger picture, a greater understanding of how this, this fits in the overall budget, that's also, you know, more, more background information that we could look at, too. If uh, I like what Alderman Rush or Alderperson Rush uh, suggested, and I like, I also can resonate to what uh, Alderman Adams has said, too. Um, my, I like that idea of the rolling not, you know, seeing what the picture is three years from now, two years from now. Uh, that's important. But then I think we talked a little bit last time, but I really think it's important that we do a contingency type funding towards those projections. 
meaning you know otherwise we're going to be having this same conversation year after year because that that capital expenditure list is going to grow and and we have to be able to meet some of that and plan for that uh, for example we have a very large piece of equipment that's going to need replacement right don't I mean several large pieces in fact tomorrow I'm going to go over and actually get a view of our shop and oh, yeah. see what the equipment looks like and what do we have there so I encourage all the council people to do that uh, get over there and understand what they buy what they already own what they need to buy in the future and perhaps at the police department as well and perhaps at the library so we have all have a better picture next year of you know not saying we don't but I mean we could have a better picture next year at budget time but contingency planning makes sense to me for large capital investments. Yes. You know, as far as uh, example of how to project your uh, costs out, all you have to do is look at our fire department's capital uh, purchase schedule that goes out 10 years. It's a good tool to look at as pure look for an example. Do we do any borrowing for the fire department's capital request, or do we usually do cash? In 2007, there was. It, you okay. know, if, there, okay. if we were bar doing a fire right. truck, then we had to borrow uh, right. if it's right. So we're not, I, I don't think anybody on the council is advocating borrowing for capital request and changing our um, policy on borrowing the next few years, right? Right. Right, so, so, and I, I know we talked about this a little bit last week too, I think uh, uh, Jeremy and Linda brought, it, brought up the idea of kind of a capital improvement program. And what, when I came in 2014, there was a process that had started before I came to create a capital improvement program. And um, I sat down, a consultant was hired, Rupert Milkey was hired, and they sat down with me and they said, well, this is what we've got so far. Um, you know, where do you want us to go from here? And I, I looked at it, and in year one of the capital improvement program, there was like $2.7 million worth of capital. And I said, well, where do we go from here? Um, throw it away. Because we can't, we can't, even, we can't even legally fund $2.7 million worth of capital in one year, let alone can, could we do it and, and have our tax rate be affordable. So talking with Rupert Milkey at the time, I said, look, you know, we, we can't borrow for probably five to eight years. So the idea of having a cap, an all-inclusive capital improvement program actually doesn't really make sense. So what? So we stopped work on that, which saved us about $30,000. And what we started to do was just kind of a, an annual approach. So I think, I think what you're asking for is easily accomplishable. It just uh, and and we're fortunate in the sense that there's there's not a lot of capital to be, to be purchased. You know, DPW has some, some pieces every year. You know, sporadically, police does. Think, thankfully, the library is brand new, so they won't have a whole lot of capital. And up up at City Hall, we don't you know we don't ever really need capital. Uh, that that would be of a, of a of a large value. So I think it would be pretty easy to accomplish what what you're talking about. You know, the it and, and we went through a similar process in Janesville that the mayor described. The difference is, you know, the county probably buys 60 vehicles a year, whereas we're buying one and a half. You know, I mean, there's just, and, and they've got the Department of Health, and they've got police, and they've got public works, and, you know, they're, they're just a much larger organization. And, and Janesville did that too, but they probably borrow for their capital. Janesville does two annual borrowings, and I'm sure the county does one. Um, we don't, we don't, we still, we still don't have that luxury to borrow for it. So we budget about $200,000 worth of capital every year, and then, you know, we try to fit it in based on, these are the things we got to have this year. So we put those at the top of the list, and then we look, okay, how much is left of that $200,000? All right, there's 40000 Okay, what else fits in there? You know, here's, 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 here's the most we can get for 40000 That's kind of how we do it on an annual, annual basis. Maybe it sounds unscientific. Maybe it sounds, you know, a little uh, scatterbrained. But, you know, with the, with the constraints that we have on the amount that we can spend, and the fact that we can't borrow, our opportunities to robustly fund capital um, is challenged. But with that being said, we, we could always increase the amount uh, that we spend on capital every year. But what that means is because, because we can't borrow or because we, we aren't borrowing, 
Um, if we increase the amount we spend on capital, that means we're going to have to have a reduction somewhere else. And, and I think to a certain point, that's what I think what Alderman Adams is saying. Uh, I agree with you, and I like the process that's existing, but I think we have an educational opportunity here yeah. for the public. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I, just getting it on a spread Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and yeah. The public needs Looking to at see it over time. Yeah. It's see what the council has to do. And, with and, and I will say, how he has that, and uh, we talked about it after the council meeting last last week. He's he's got that information, and I'm sure Scott could probably put something together very quickly too. And and for our organization, that's about it. You know, we'll ask Lisa, but you know that thing's still got the new car smell on it. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, but we're replacing a four-year-old water heater. And, too. and I know the fire department. I know that's one of the things Chief Baker wants to look at because when they need a piece of equipment, you're talking. Like the cost of four plows <laughs> in one year, and so you know there's there's that component too. The last several times we've bought equipment, we've done short term loans. I think maybe sold land or something to pay it off. Shortly thereafter, in '07, we're paying for that till 2026. Um, we took fund balance for the last item. We took yeah. 300,000 from fund balance to pay for our share was seven hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment so you That's know my point because I'm gonna step back and say as a taxpayer not sitting up here but as a taxpayer in the city I want to know what those needs are mm. because then I better sure. better understand why no. my taxes might go up nine cents no you're exactly ten right. cents no. on the dollar no. so You're, all of your points are very well taken and you know and, uh, and I just Howie is, I, I, I just want to make sure folks know, I mean, Howie is on top of that. He knows that. But I think your question is, that's great. Let's share it. Yeah. Do we know yeah. that? Right. right. And actually, um, the Public Works Committee at one time actually was receiving logs of what each of the workers were doing as far as maintaining the equipment and all of that sort of stuff. So so we, we we've actually been... <laughs> You know, we've already kind of been doing that. I think, I guess it's, for me, I'm thinking that it's a matter of let's just ask for the information. It, it went from a monthly to a quarterly to just, you know, if you just wanted it. I mean, it, it's still kept that way, so in case you know if a piece of equipment is using a lot of time for yeah. justification. Yeah. So so it's, it, it's not a, it, it's already... I guess it's already in the computer and already standardized how to do it. So and we looked at so that. It's not an, an something example, brand new to have to right. do. Right. You know. An example of that is we looked at that this year, when the question became, do we replace the old blue squad car or the red fusion? And and you know Nick looked at the maintenance logs and said we'd never work on the blue car, so maybe that's the one we keep. I mean that that so that discussion is always ongoing. And the life expectancy of those items is important to, to to know, okay, we bought it in X year, how long is it going to last, right, roughly? And I think that one of the things that, I, I think one of the things that we might want to think about doing for these large capital projects is in public works is the same thing that we're doing in the police department with their vehicles. You know, we, we budget a certain amount a year for vehicles. And I know um, Howie and I have talked about some of his equipment, and some of his equipment he leases, and he does a lot of creative things so that he can get what he needs through the purchases and uh, working with different companies and such. And um, I think if I think that it would actually be a good idea to do a... a snow plow fund or something like that but then I'm wondering if if you actually do you know the question I guess would be is do you want to put that money into a contingency fund and use it as you need it or are you going to actually say I'm going to put this in for the snow plow for five years down the road I, I think um, to a certain degree I think that is the question yeah uh, one thing I will say and in this is maybe this is just inside baseball or just you know in the weeds. When we say contingency, I just want to make sure folks understand 
both on the council and the public, when we say contingency, contingency is really kind of an emergency fund. If we have a liability claim, if we have a lawsuit, if we have a bad storm, if we get you know a really terrible winter, that's generally where we attempt to. That, that's what that we try to hold on to contingency for that. So I, I think what you're what, what what you're saying is 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 maybe like a capital fund yeah. or or a, like a rolling capital replacement fund. Like Jerry right. mentioned last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to make sure that the vernacular is is yeah. is consistent there. Um, we in this in this proposed budget we reduce reduce contingency because because you know it's it it we had to balance the budget and that was something that didn't affect service it was a, it's a risk anytime you reduce contingency it's a risk you never know you know we had two lawsuits this year you know we had a handful of claims last year we had a ton of claims for some reason I don't know why um, but you know, you, you just never know what what the year is going to bring. So that's really why we try to hold on to contingency. And every time we lower contingency, it's it's a risk. It's a risky run. Uh, so so I, I just wanted to kind of make that distinction. So I I hear what you're saying, and I, and I think we're on the same page. But I just wanted to make sure folks understood that contingency is really emergency, and capital uh, a capital fund or a capital replacement fund is is a similar concept, but but would be a different it would be a different place, right. um, uh, one that we don't have right now. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, right. okay. hopefully. Because we had one and we spent it all, yes. and it didn't continue. Right, and that, that's the risk. Yeah, there, there used to be a capital improvement fund, and that that fund was drained when this building was built. But that, that's the idea, and you would yeah. it again now, and you drained it two months. Yeah, that that item's there, and it demands your attention. Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great point, need, great point. If we have it, then we can fund it, Jeremy, that's right. Well, I mean, we're going to have the same amount of money. It's just what what fund are you going to put it in? It's not going to be significantly different, even if you have $30,000. It's just right. what fund are you going to put it in? Right. Okay. I want to start. I want to make just an observation. It's kind of a little bit of a segue. But I was looking at the uh, uh, agendas from or the... Um, Agendas from last year, and nine projects we didn't, or nine capital expenses we didn't pay for last year, at least is the budget process. Three of those are on the 2018 capital request as ones we want to fund. One is on the pending request. All the rest disappeared completely off this, so they must be paid for this year. So I just want to make that as an interesting observation. Only four are even showing up on this budget to look at in the first place <clears throat> out of nine. So, which is wonderful, but it also says that. Things they're making on the pending requests are still getting dealt with on a yearly basis. They and are. looking at the pending requests this year, last year it was all vehicles, or you know, it was all things like DPW, things like trailers, vehicles, all things like that. This year, if you look at it, it's roads, sidewalks, things like that. So it's a different kind. Just of want to point out that we have all these pending requests, but they still get funded. Somewhere. I mean, it's not a crisis situation. Yeah, it's not. Where it, if it was a crisis situation, it, it wouldn't be on the pending list. Right. I will say that, yeah. But, but a couple years from now, it could be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The snowplow is a good oh, yeah. example. The snowplow is 22 years old. We've made 24 years old. We've made substantial repairs to that. But that, that is something that could quickly jump up to the top of the list. Um, yeah. Do you like Jeremy's idea of creating a capital uh, expense for the fund so that you can then draw that to pay for your expenses? on these big capital expenses. Um, and then I also just would like to um, add my comments with regard to the nonprofits request. Um, I just listened to Stephanie Klett talk about the billions of dollars that the state of Wisconsin gets from their tourism. Tourism has nothing to do with equipment or even filling a pothole. It's the quality of life and the things that we have in our city that bring people into our city. Um, we have, well, uh, with, with the Milton House and the city's history of the Milton House, all of the work that they have done on their own this year with volunteers as far as the structure, the outside of the structure and the stable and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, that's something that people come here to do. 
to go to the Milton House. We have days set aside that you can see on the website if you look of things that you can do to when you come into Milton. If you want to spend the day in the Milton, these are these are your suggested things that you do. Um, I am 100% for supporting the nonprofit request that we have been asked for this year. I am 100% for doing that. Um, we have a population of people that's aging. We have more people that are going into the gathering place. Um, they're always they're always busy. The parking lot's always full when they're open. There's you know. I realize that not everybody goes there, but I also realize that there's people that go there who live in the city of Milton that utilize those services and they deserve to have a place to go. They just they just deserve to have that. Now, um, the questions that I raised at the municipal conference with regard to the gathering place specifically and the funding of um, senior centers. I got a I got a wide variety of responses from people. I had I had one group that said that they did not support the city in no way funded theirs. I had some where the Cindy uh, one only one. <laughs> I had one where um, it was it was in conjunction with the Parks and Recreation. I had one that. Um, the city actually were it was an employer the city the city was the one that was managing the senior center and then there was the one where it was a it was a combination of both um, I, I as a city representative I understand that my job is to make sure that we have in our city departments the things that we need to run the city but I also realize that it's my responsibility to keep the city going and to make it the city that people want to come to whether they're coming here to live or they're coming here to visit for the day or they're coming here for a wedding or a class reunion um, that's part of what that's that is part of our city income that's what supports our businesses our, our businesses support the school it's all just it's all a cycle a great big circle where we're all just supporting each other and I I would never say that I'm not going to support the nonprofit request but I would definitely like to say that I think that if we did a capital replacement fund I think that that you know if we go with um, B, which I am leaning towards. Um, I think that having a capital replacement fund is a is a very good idea. Um, just, um, but I also want to point out that there's always going to be something on that capital list, and and it's going to change by month, may change by year. There's always going to be something there, and so I think it's important that we look at everything overall. And I really don't think that, I don't think that what our nonprofit request is asking for, I really just don't think that it's that much for what they do for the city and the people that live here. Jeremy, did the county eliminate all of their nonprofit funding or are they still funding some nonprofits? Um, approximately, I think four, four different um, Nonprofits weren't funded from the original budget that we approved today, but we approved a motion to uh, explore explore uh, funding those in a different way that kind of at least acknowledges the attorney general's opinion on on whether or not you can uh, donate to use tax dollars for nonprofits. Um, United Way and, and and Health Net see, seem to be the two of the four that would um, benefit from the the new the new program, and that's basically asking for uh, contracted services, uh, paying for specific uh, line item type things in, in in order to give them the same money to do the same thing that they were doing. And same goes for United Way. Um, nothing was official today, but at least. Uh, We've moved the administration towards trying to accomplish that. Do you remember what? How much the 
overall um, funding was? Yeah, it was a prop. Uh, it was approximately seventy-four thousand dollars. Twelve thousand to our VCP, our, our, our VCP, twelve hundred to some neighborhood donation charity thing that kind of I think has been ignored for years and years and years and could have stopped a while ago. And then uh, Health Net, fifty-seven thousand dollars for the services they provide, and uh, four thousand was to United Way. That was the total. Well, that was the total, yeah. and then both programs for United Way and HealthNet can fall underneath this new category. Either a relief program set up, um, it'll be something brand new like a capital account, or um, just a, a contract for services. And could you just, um, Al? I know that that we had talked about this. The um, direction that the county was given from the state could you clarify if that same direction is goes to this municipalities also right so for I guess so to kind of catch folks up in case they they're not aware of the conversation that's going to happening the Attorney General uh, made, a, made a ruling or an opinion uh, that county boards cannot fund certain types of nonprofits um, so the, the question that I have gotten from a number of folks, including many folks on the council, is does that ruling apply to municipalities as well? And the answer is no. And the reason being is that county board uh, budgets and, and their allocations are, are addressed in a separate section of state statutes than, than city uh, municipalities uh, are. But with that being said, uh, the other part of that that is still somewhat concerning or alarming is the attorney, when, when asked, when the attorney general was asked about, well, what about cities and villages, basically the answer was, I wasn't asked that question. So what I hear that as, I wasn't asked that question yet. So if somebody were to ask that question and he was to opine on that, I, I think it's probably safe to assume that it would, that it would fall under the same auspices because you know why would it be different from counties and cities but the, you know I guess we'll cross that bridge if and when we get there exactly looking at the statute that was recommended um, it's allowing counties to give money to nonprofits that provide specific services but this includes assistance to senior citizens historical societies fairs tourism attractions and victims of domestic violence those are the ones that are approved to receive funding from the state through counties was it Could you read it again because we are having some interference? Um, the statute 59. Okay. Looking it up, it says state statutes allow counties to give money to nonprofits that provide specific services, including assistance to senior citizens, historical societies, fairs, tourism attractions, and victims of domestic violence. And see, now both of these programs in which we're exploring provide services, but we've been giving them in lump sums, and then they do their operational capital. They, they do their own business. So that's kind of where we're at. Right. So municipalities are, are uh, specifically addressed in the statute that um, they can donate to Historical those... Different categories, so it's actually Co counties are or counties. Yeah, the municipalities are not addressed they're, at all. They're, they're, he's silent on municipalities in his uh, in his opinion. But is there a there isn't a statute then for? No, it it, it says state statute, but it's like you said towards counties. I think yeah. when I was trying to make is that you're trying to extrapolate what he's saying about counties into municipalities. When kind of considering the nonprofits that have been brought forward. Those that are historical societies providing assistance to senior citizens, domestic violence, etc. We have none that would be excluded from that list that are required. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. If it if it was apples to apples, I think is what you're. Yeah. And, and to to your point, the the statute that governs county boards is is completely different than the statute that governs municipalities there, in, in terms of their right. uh, uh, what they can fund. So I've never I've never read that portion of the state statutes as it pertains to municipalities. And if Mark was here, he 
he, maybe he's never read it either. I, I don't know why you would, I guess, unless you could ask this question. It may not outline anything like that at all. Yeah. And I just want to point out, um, as far as I'm concerned, these areas are, this is the quality of life that people in the city expect. And I think that as us as the government officials that we need to um, we need to do what we can to enhance the quality of life and to continue it as best as we can. And those were cities, not counties that you were talking to. Right. So it seems like there's, depending on the city, uh, people have different philosophies on on how to uh, how to spend their money in their budget. Um, some are we're not going to do anything for nonprofits, and some have a variation. If that's fair to say. And Ryan wanted to say something. Add to what you're saying about those talking about those cities. When we were at the League of Municipalities conference, talking to a couple different cities, all the ones I talked to all support do stuff for the nonprofits. They donate money to nonprofits. Um, one of the ones I talked to was like Madison, though. I mean, they actually allocate money to a committee who handles all the nonprofits, for example. So Which is something that Larry had brought up last I, year. Yes. And that's my point to it, just that I'm not opposed to helping nonprofits. What I want to understand and make sure we all have an understanding of is a clear process. That's that's clear and fair and equitable to everyone. And yep. that's something that we've asked, I know, uh, that um, Ryan and I asked about it also is you know can we can we take a look at this at the beginning of the year and 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 see if there's something else that we can do with this so that it's so that each year for budget we already have something in place for a process is there any further comments uh, about the budget regarding uh, capital requests, nonprofits, A or B, um, yeah, anything any, else? Any, any, from, from staff's perspective, any direction that you can provide us in terms of A or B, and if B, what, where would you like to see that those dollars go? I've heard a lot, I, I think I've kind of already heard that answer. Um, but it may be, a, well, I guess, I guess maybe if there's a differentiation of opinions from that or, or maybe an affirmation, what I've heard is that it seems like the majority of folks are interested in budget B right. and there seems to be some interest in a capital replacement fund. Um, so that, that's what I've heard so far. Dan, would you agree? That's what I've heard too. Okay. Okay. So I'll just make a motion that we go with budget B. And that with that budget, we use the thirty thousand dollars for seven hundred what? Thirty thousand seven hundred eighty-four. Oh, right. Can can I just make a, a recommendation? Instead of saying I make a motion to go with, can maybe it's better to say make a motion to direct staff to prepare to prepare budget a budget reflective of budget B. With the inclusion of the thirty thousand seven hundred eighty-four dollars as part of a capital replacement fund. Yes, so moved. <laughs> because Does everybody I, understand that I, motion. I want to make it very, very clear that the budget is not approved and cannot be approved tonight. That I just want to make sure that that's very, very, very clear. Thank you for that correction, <laughs> to Becky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Second. Okay. So everybody does okay we're gonna have Inga read it back and this is a motion re regarding directing staff to prepare a final draft yeah to, well uh, or a, yeah, to a budget a budget to be brought forth for potential yeah, resolution uh, yeah a resolution to be brought forth for, for potential adoption on the 28th okay. yeah. so we're not adopting a budget tonight correct. got it right. okay right. all right Inga so correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> um, Alderman well, <laughs> was. Alderperson Clark motioned to direct staff to prepare a budget reflective of budget B with the inclusion of $30,784 for a capital improvement fund. Okay. 
Yep, you can discuss. Cool. So we have a motion and a second, so I'll right. have to vote on that. And if you want to make uh, another motion after that. That's fine. Right. Okay. To amend this? Or. Yeah, Say it again, Dave, please. I'm sorry. I said it's just, just to un folk understand that still with the $21,000, still in the budget for non profits. Yes. Well, we haven't decided that yet. No, that's decided. Right. Right. Sense. Okay. All right. Any further questions on this specific amendment? Motion. Motion. Okay, now Dave has just confused me because when I look at this paperwork, I'm seeing that B is that leaves the nonprofit request as is. Yes. yes. He's just saying okay. we're not approving it. Right. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't hear him very well. Thank you. Anything else? Um, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Dave. Dave was in opposition. Dave, you're in opposition. I'm in opposition to leave it as is. Yes. Okay, just. Okay. Right. This is just um, directing Direct. staff to prepare a do you want to read it back, Linga? A uh, motion to direct staff to prepare a budget reflective of budget B with the inclusion of $30,784 for a capital improvement fund. So it doesn't say anything. It's just looking at budget B and putting that money towards capital improvement. It's using budget B as our primary for discussion in a couple weeks. I, I didn't want to have identify yet how to use that 33 oh 30, no, no. so you, you won't have identified how no. to use that it's just going no. in the capital improvement fund we're going to create point. we're going to create a, a line item called capital improvement fund okay. then, yeah so yeah. Okay. And then i don't think he understands it okay no and then we'll do that second part later mm -hmm. um dave do you understand did you understand that and because teresa had a question okay so Teresa, approve or no? I'll go along with it. So it's unanimous then? Okay, all right. Okay. Is is there just so we're just so we're clear too, I guess, as part of that. Is there is there a general sentiment one way or the other in terms of the nonprofits? Does they does is is there is there a majority feeling on to, to fully fund or not? Just because there's been a lot of discussion around it. Or, or and I don't want to have to write up like three different resolutions with different allocations either. Go ahead, Dave. What I was getting at. Let's get it straight now, so that Dan and Al aren't doing three different documents. If they're fully funding uh, nonprofits, if that's left in there, my answer is no. Can we do a second motion with the nonprofits so that since sure. we, well, because we've already voted on the other one, right? We're done. We're yeah, done with that. We're we're B and we're gonna okay. Yeah. But but you can I, I mean you can certainly make a second motion in regards to nonprofits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. We just went to be essentially, and all right, then I will make the motion that we 
continue to fund our nonprofits. Second. Can, can I can I suggest the motion? Say something to the effect of make a motion to direct staff to prepare a budget for November 28th that includes the full the fully funding of nonprofit requests. So moved. I agree with that. As requested, um, as requested, as so the Y gathering place and um, and the Milton House based on their requests. And then we had a second, right? Do we have a second? Okay. All right. Discussion. Discussion. Thank and you, you can still, I mean, that's one way to fund nonprofits. You can also have motions to fund nonprofits, but fund them differently. So this is fully fund as they all have requested the amount. Okay. Right, it's not to vote on the budget, but for staff to prepare a budget. I'm okay Larry. with I'm okay with that with the caveat. And I know I've been harping on it, but with that caveat that we seriously do something for next year. I Which feel we already voted on. To I do know that. The last and time. we did. Yep. And and we directed staff, but I don't want to lose sight of that. Um, I do agree with Alderman Adams and I agree with others who say we should fund fully fund it. So I'm struggling between the two to be honest with you. Lucky you don't have to pass a budget tonight. That's right. But I but I'm on the fence, so just so you all know that when it comes time for our voting. There might night. be a tie vote. Thanks for the warning. I might be sick. No. Um okay. Ryan. Personally I think we should fully fund the uh, all of the nonprofits. Um I think as far as, as I mentioned last week, I looked at our comprehensive plan, which is kind of our goals as a city, I guess you could say, uh, it kind of a way direction to us as to how we need to look at driving the city forward. And all throughout that plan are these non uh, are these nonprofits mentioned quite often. Um, first of all, in our goals, number three on our goals for the city as a whole is to protect valuable historic resources. They contribute to our unique character. Moving into that more uh, in our strategic initiatives, our very first strategic initiative is to make Milton a destination. And going with that, when you go down into page 45 of our um, comprehensive plan, it brings up cultural resources. And as the very first cultural resource, it mentions the Milton House specifically. And it mentions our goal inside of cultural resources as a city are to celebrate historical and other cultural resources as key assets of Milton's character, which to me means that it's part of Milton as a city um, itself. And therefore, I think that's something that should be uh, funded in that sense, because it is part of Milton, and it's our, part of our identity and everything. And to that, that's the cultural side of things. You also have the community facilities section, which mentions specifically the gathering place, as well as the YMCA. And the, the goal there is to maintain the city's high quality of life through access to a wide range of sustainable public services and facilities, which these have proved to be, especially the gathering place has gone and provides so many services to the city as well. And one can't really think of much about what's going on in the city without thinking of the gathering place or the Milton House. They're both names that are heard throughout the whole city as a whole. And to me, that means that they're a big part of the Milton's identity as a whole and our identity. So really do think that these need to be funded even if it's for operational because they are part of us as a whole as a city so. any other comments just that uh, you know I don't dispute that we should should be uh, funding the um, groups the non uh, the groups that we have talked about but that I am opposed to funding them for the operational uh, costs that they have applied for and you know I've explained earlier that there are other ways to approach this. So. Something I will also mention is a lot of these organizations they need grants for doing special activities but it's very hard to get money I think for operational expenses. 
So I think it's to me it's reasonable to ask for operational expenses. And correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie, but getting grants for events and stuff is actually, I would say, a much easier task than trying to get something for operational expenses. Yeah. And well, so. Let's not say easy in a very relative term. I it's a relative it's term. Expensive. I'm not saying it's easy to get because I know there's a lot of work involved and you get be, don't get a lot of them. It but, would be the argument to, well, why don't you get grants? Right. Which is something that's presented to every nonprofit get a grant for it. And Grants have to be event focused, program focused, and frankly are competitive. Right. You're competing against 20 other nonprofits who also have the same and the Milton House goes for grants actively. I know that the Gathering Place, I believe, goes for grants actively. Both do active fundraising to help cover their expenses as well. But a lot of that funding goes to their actual events or things like that. <clears throat> they don't necessarily have a lot of source of income when it comes to operational expenses. So I think that's a way that the city can actually help these organizations in the city is to cover the operational side rather than events or big capital expenses because there are more fundraising opportunities that can happen for those. It's hard to go and say, I need money for operating expenses. It's a lot easier to say, I need money to help rebuild this building or repair this building. So I actually think that it's better that we pay and we assist in the operational side of things because that's the one that's harder for them to be able to actually recoup. Any other questions? Any other comments on this motion? One more from Larry. Yeah, yeah. Quiet. this is what we're here for. When I did my document, you probably all saw that. The, and I bring it back to that. The primary purpose of a city council or a town board or a village uh, group of uh, trustees is to ensure that needs are met in the community. Needs of, you know, safety, public uh, health, um, et cetera. I, that's our primary purpose for existing. So for my, my dilemma is when push comes to shove, the priority goes to the taking care of city services. I think the priority is always there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, not only is that priority always there, but then you also need to remember too that I mean, we have people that rely on the meals at the gathering place. So I guess I consider that, and not only that, but they also offer immunizations and um, checks, on a, different kinds of physical checks. Um, I don't know if anybody else gets those things where you can have, pay $100 and <laughs> they'll look at all of the veins in your body or whatever. Those things, those types of things happen at the gathering place. And it's specifically for those people that have those types of needs. Um, and I also would just like to add too that um, the gathering place um, does accommodate people with different types of disabilities too. Um, and not just physical disabilities, also emotional disabilities. There's a sign right on the door at the entrance that they welcome people with dementia. They're dementia friendly. You, know, you don't have that in a lot of places. I mean, I, I just wanted to point that out. I guess I will add one thing, though. I will say, Larry, that it does also make sense to look at our process for this. So I do agree with the idea of, of looking at our process of how we, you know, fund nonprofits and stuff. But um, I think it is something to continue to, to do. But it doesn't hurt to look at our process. So I, I do agree with you on that. Well, and I think... Uh, you know, the public spoke quite loudly when they made our comprehensive plan um, that these were things that they that they valued and wanted um, the city to somehow support. Now, I guess there's a, a debate on whether does support mean financially or, you know, how do you support that? But um, we, ha we put forth a lot of effort to get community input on, on doing that comprehensive plan and did, we spent a lot of money on updating our comprehensive plan. So I like that, um, that Ryan referred back to our goals and our strategies with that because I think that's something that a lot of communities sometimes put together and then they put it aside and it's meant to be a guide for how their city grows and what the future looks like. So um, I would encourage everyone to look at that and, and be familiar with it too.
And we also had a lot of people here at our last meeting, too, in support of the nonprofits. The other part we have to remember is the city does a lot of in kind donations that are not. I mean, I think the nonprofit community needs to recognize the in kind donations that this city makes to them for all of their events, supporting that, putting up picnic tables, taking care of the garbage, um, um, parking lot renovation, all these kind of things. I mean, we're not not helping people. So I, that's very important because I've had people call me saying, well, Larry, you don't want to help people. That's not true. So, we do the payroll for the gathering place. Go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. I say we do the game uh, the payroll for the gathering place. We, uh, I'm not sure how much. I think we paid a good chunk of that parking lot for the bill now. I, I guess I, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm against Sydney's. I'm not. My my problem is priorities, and when Larry laid out his his uh, deal or his process, he mentioned there's going to be years when we don't have the money. I don't want this thing to be a uh, laid out in concrete thing that we're bound to do every year, and and right now. To my way of looking, all the unfunded uh, issues we've got, we don't have the money to give away. I don't have a problem with when we have all our stuff taken care of and, and there's $20,000 sitting out there if they wanted to apply for it. But to just automatically have to budget that every year, irregardless of what else is going on, to me, doesn't make sense. Thank you, Dave. Is there any other questions or comments? I just would like to comment that I can say for myself and the time that I have served as a city councilwoman that there were many, many years that we did not do anything for our nonprofits. And what, I'm as far as, as far as giving them money for, like Ryan said, operations or building repairs. And as a result of that, a lot of those, a lot of things got, you know, the, the buildings were worn and places were closed down and pe there weren't people in the facilities to help. And, and you know, it, it, it was very obvious. And as a matter of fact, I can, I can tell you, that that's one of the main reasons that I've always been a supporter of the nonprofits because I don't want to see these things go. I don't want to see the buildings collapse and in need of repair, and I don't want to see empty parking lots. Um, I want to see people coming in and enjoying them, and more importantly so, I'd like to see the people in the city of Milton enjoying them, and I think that they do because if they weren't enjoying them, then well, they wouldn't be asking us to help support it. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Yes. Okay. After we read it. <laughs> Alderperson Clark motioned to direct staff to prepare a budget that includes fully funding nonprofit requests from the Gathering Place, Milton House Museum slash Milton Historical Society, and the YMCA of Northern Rock County. Alderperson Holbrook seconded. Okay, so I'll just uh, do a roll call vote. Linda? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Teresa? No. Um, Larry? Opposed. Dave? Thanks a lot. Aye. Go ahead. Prepare the, prepare the document. <laughs> I mean, you can all tie the vote up next week again. Anything else? <laughs> Go to the order. I guess there's going to be no team building tonight. <laughs> so with that, so with that being said, um, if there, I guess if there's no further discussion on it, what what Dan and I and the rest of the uh, 
staff will do is we will prepare a budget resolution uh, that reflects budget B with the with uh, with the additional dollars going to a capital improvement program, and uh, it will have a, the budget will be prepared with the nonprofit being fully funded as they've requested. Um, <coughs> So then we'll have that on the 28th. That'll be uh, for, for adoption at that point. And, and just so folks are clear, too, I'm sorry, I'm going to make this last point. If the, it, at that point, if the council wants to change the budget, they, they still can. Um, it's not, it's, it's right. not as though whatever gets presented that night is what's adopted. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want folks to think that. But uh, we'll prepare a resolution with that information in it that sets the levy. And... Uh, I think it's really good to note that we don't. Have, it, it's a healthy council when you don't all agree. It's very important we all remember that. I mean, in the end, we're all focused on the right things. It's just that we have a different perspective on the issue. As long as you don't fight in a parking lot. As long as you don't fight in a parking lot. Thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you're saying you want to do team building exercises? <laughs> <laughs> it's the word. It's not on the agenda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we're going to spend a good hour on the 28th before we actually vote on the budget to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll have a couple speakers. <laughs> um, general items. I have a general item. I just would like to say that. Um, I and Anissa attended the um, ceremony for Veterans Day at both the park and over at the gathering place. It was very well attended. There's actually seems to be an increase in veterans that and their families that are coming, which I think is just great. Um, the speaker was very informative and. Um, I just, I just want to thank the gathering place for all the stuff that they did for that. And Dick and Dick Fry and Anissa and it was just a wonderful thing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other general items? All right. A motion. Oh, okay. The next meeting, November 28th, 7 p.m. Uh, item 10, motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, everyone.